Good morning, First Baptist family. I'm honored to welcome you to worship this day after Christmas. I hope everything is going well with you and your family this morning and you're ready to celebrate the good news that Jesus has come. I want to welcome those of you who are guests with us today. We're sure grateful that you're here. You'll find a communication card in the back of the seat in front of you, and we'd love for you to fill that out, let us know a little about you. You can also use that card to let us know how we can be praying for you, and we'd be honored to pray for you today. We are, uh, if you're worshiping with us online, you'll find a digital version of that card on our church website. We'd be glad to know about you as well and pray for you as well. We're going to have a special time of worship today. We've got families in here together. That means if you hear uh, little kid noises, you should be excited about that. It can remind you that Jesus was a little kid, and we will enjoy this time together as we worship together as one big church family. Let's bow together and pray. God, thank you so much for your faithfulness to us. Thank you for this season where we can celebrate your coming to our world. And I pray that as we worship you today, we'll be amazed at who you are and what you've done for us. In your name we pray, amen. Welcome to worship. If you'd stand and greet one another, you might see someone that you don't know or you haven't seen in a while. Greet one another and just tell them, Merry Day After Christmas. <laughs> Sing with me today, majesty, worship his majesty. Majesty, worship his majesty. Unto Jesus be all glory, honor, and praise. Majesty, kingdom authority, flow from his throne. To his own anthem we raise, and so we exalt, lift up on high the name of Jesus, magnify, come glorify Christ Jesus the King, oh, majesty, worship his majesty. Jesus who died, now glorified, King of all kings. See, Jesus who died, oh, Jesus who died, now glorified, King of all kings. Amen. Give him praise today. Majesty to his name. Amen. He's the King of Kings, Lord of all. We're singing a song today, In the Darkness. In the darkness we were waiting, without hope, without light, till from heaven you came running, there was mercy in your eyes, to fulfill the law and prophets, to a virgin came the word from a throne, from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt. Sing praise the Father and praise the... Come on, lift your voices. the cross for even in your suffering 
you saw to the other side, knowing this was our salvation, Jesus, for our sake you died. Lift your voice, church. Praise the Father. Praise the Father. Christmas. Awesome. Okay, put your hand down. Now raise your hand if you're a kid and you would like a candy cane. Okay, keep your hand in the air and make sure you keep your hand in the air until you get a candy cane. If you're in the balcony, we have some coming to you and make sure you don't open it, okay, because you're going to need it for the kids' message. Um, once you have your candy cane, you can put your hand down because you're going to need this candy cane for what we're about to do. Awesome. I see some really grown kids raising their hand. <laughs> That's okay, we have lots of candy canes. <laughs> I had so much fun celebrating with my family and friends this past week, celebrating the birth of Jesus. We, we did so many fun things this past week. And this candy cane is super special because it's going to remind us some really important things about Christmas and about what we celebrated this past week. Did you know candy could do that? Candy's pretty cool. So last year, we learned that this candy cane could make the shape of a letter. Does anyone remember? I know a year was a long time ago. What letter do you think this candy cane can make? Can you show me with your candy cane? Just show me with your candy cane. Let's see if I can get it right. Did I do it right? J. It makes a J. And what does the J stand for? Jesus, and we just spent yesterday celebrating the birth of baby Jesus, who is our Savior and Lord, and that is super exciting. And we're going to use this candy cane to remind us of the story of the birth of baby Jesus. So what I want you to do is turn the candy cane this way. Do you know what this is a picture of? 
the shepherd's staff. That one's pretty neat. Do you know what a shepherd's staff does? That was a hard question, a shepherd's staff. So a shepherd's staff is what a shepherd carries. When, so a shepherd is who takes care of sheep. And a shepherd carries the staff and it helps them protect the sheep and keep them safe. And he carries around and it helps them take care of sheep. And the shepherd are super important in our true story of Jesus' birth. Did you know that the shepherd were really important? So we're going to see the important role that the shepherds play in the birth of baby Jesus. And they're so important that every time you hear the word shepherd in Luke 2 this morning, I want you to baa like a sheep. <laughs> Can you do that? Can we practice? You ready? Shepherd. Wow. Oh, you are so ready. Okay, we're going to read Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 18. It says, there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby. It was night and they were taking care of their sheep. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news. It will bring great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Here is how you will know I am telling you the truth. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in the manger. Now, we know that's Jesus, right? Suddenly, a large group of angels from heaven also appeared. They were praising God. They said, may glory be given to God in the highest heaven, and may peace be given to those he is pleased with on earth. The angels left and went into heaven. Then the shepherds <laughs> said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. The baby was lying in the manger after the shepherds <laughs> had seen him. They told everyone. They reported what the angel had said about this child. All who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds <laughs> had said to him. Wow, y'all were doing amazing. So the shepherd's staff, remind us that the, oh, y'all don't have to bat anymore, that's fine. <laughs> the shepherd's staff reminds us that the shepherds were the first people that got to see Jesus. And did you hear what they did after they saw baby Jesus? They went and told everyone. Can we say that together? They went and told everyone. They told everyone the good news of Jesus. And boys and girls, we can do that too. Christmas was yesterday, but today we can tell everyone the good news of Jesus. It doesn't have to stop yesterday. We can go and tell. So take this candy cane home, and I want you to take it as a reminder that you can tell your friends and your family and everyone you see that Jesus is born in the good news of Jesus. Can you do that? Awesome. So make a J. Now do a separate staff. Oh, that was backwards. Make a J. Now do a shepherd staff. Now turn to your parents and say, can you hold on to this for me? <laughs> awesome. And now let's pray in three, two, and one. Dear God, thank you so much for the good news of Jesus that we got to celebrate Christmas and remember that you loved us so much that you sent baby Jesus to be born. It was the greatest gift of all, and now we get to go and tell the world that Jesus was born. We love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We have a story to tell. Jesus was born, he lived, he died, and was born again and resurrected. And uh, we are looking forward to the day that he comes back. But until that day comes, it is our job to share that story. And uh, it's your gifts that allow us to do that, your generous gifts and offerings. So today, now is the time that we're going to take the offering today. Um, to go into the nations to help, whether it's supporting IMB like we did or different uh, cooperations to help missionaries or whatever it is that our church gives to, um, God, uh, just let our church be generous. And let's pray today. Here on this day, thank you for your son and the hope that we have. God, it is now our job. We have become messengers of the gospel of Jesus Christ, your son your firstborn who died and rose again. Wow. God, the fact that you gave your son should be a testament of the love that you have for us. And God, we want to love you back. And just as you gave us everything in our life, we want to give that back to you today. So God, let us give cheerfully and with your mission in mind. And that mission is to make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. God helps to do that today. We pray this all in your name. Amen. Baby. 
Thank you, choir. And thank you, church family, for the celebration this morning. Well, it's now the day after the day. It's the day after Christmas. It's the day after the day we've been building toward forever and planning for and excited about. What do you do when Christmas is over? Most of you probably don't have any more presents under the trees. Maybe you've got piles of wrapping paper in the living room instead. Some of you may be a little melancholy about the fact that all the company has left. Some of you may be a little melancholy about the fact that the company is still here. Uh, we're, we're kind of in recovery mode. What do you do when Christmas is over? Maybe some of you are going to watch some football today, maybe eat some leftovers, maybe take a nice long recovery nap, maybe go and exchange some things that didn't fit, maybe start thinking about taking those decorations down. But is there something more significant that we can do now that Christmas is over? Is there something that we can do in light of what we have just celebrated that we can carry forward with us into our everyday lives? And maybe a good way to go about addressing this question is to look at what happened immediately after the birth of Jesus when he came. When you look at Scripture, you've got this moment that divides history, the moment when God entered our world in the form of a baby. What happened right after that moment? What happened in the moment after the moment that changed history? You can kind of picture the scene in your mind because we've had it frozen for us in, in you know, all the pictures of the birth of Jesus and in nativity scenes and stuff like that. You can picture Mary and Joseph and the baby. You can picture the shepherd standing or kneeling in reverence. What happened right after that? What was the next thing that happened? What happened the moment after the moment changed that changed everything? Well, take a look at Luke chapter 2, and you'll see. Luke chapter 2, starting in verse 17. Kimberly read part of this just a moment ago. Right after gentle Mary laid her child lowly in a manger, right after the shepherds harked to hearing the angels sing, right after the shepherds came and found baby Jesus away in a manger, here's what happened. Luke 2, starting in verse 17. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. When we look at the actions of the shepherds right after the moment, when we look at the actions of Mary right after the moment, we see some instruction for ourselves about what we do when Christmas is over. And I'm going to be a really good Baptist preacher this morning, and I'm going to tell you three things to do, and they all start with the letter P, all right? This is not normally the way I do it, but we're going to alliterate this thing today. So anyway, the first thing that we should do after Christmas is to proclaim and the shepherd set the example for us here. Like Kimberly was telling us a moment ago, as soon as they came to see the baby, they went and told about the baby. It says they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. They talked to everybody they could find and told them, we saw angels. They told us about this baby who was Christ and Savior and Lord. We went and we saw him. And they don't stop to make excuses they don't say, you know what, we're shepherds. We don't have the theological training to tell people about the works of God, so we shouldn't go tell. They didn't even stop to take a shower and think, you know what, I smell like sheep poop. Nobody wants to hear me. They didn't care. They just went and told. They didn't wait for the angels to come back and say, now go and tell people about the baby. No, as soon as they saw the baby, they went and told about the baby. The... the that's our job too. We ought to walk away from the manger telling everybody who will listen, look what God has done. We ought to walk away from our encounter with the life-changing love of God and be willing to share that good news with others. We are not to be just a, a bucket collecting the love and grace of God. We are to be a hose through whom that grace and love flows to everybody around us. We ought to be folks who can't stop talking about what God has done. I got to visit with a, a new family in our church last week, the, the Prosser family. 
and learn that she is suffering from an aggressive brain cancer, a glioblastoma on her brain, that just two months ago, she had completely lost the ability to speak because of that tumor. And they, the, the surgeon working with them talked about doing some surgery, but told them there's only about a 2% chance that it would be effective. They went forward with the surgery, and now she can talk well and can think clearly, and she knows that her, her days are probably numbered, but she is just blown away by the blessing that God has given to her, and she wants to tell everybody who will listen about the good thing that has happened to her. When you have a blessing that you experience, it's natural to want to tell it. And when we experience the good news of the coming of Jesus Christ, we ought to want to tell people about it. And the shepherds tell the world. And in verse 18, we read maybe the biggest understatement in the whole Bible. All who heard it were amazed. No kidding. Uh, imagine that you're a shopkeeper in Bethlehem, and you're just doing your thing, and a bunch of shepherds barge into your building, and they say, God's here, and he's wearing a diaper, and some angels came and told us about it. Have a great day. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of amazing news. And in a way, these shepherds become the very first Christian preachers. They are the first people to proclaim the good news of Jesus. And that's our job, too. We are messengers. We are ambassadors. We are witnesses. We come and see, and then we go and tell. That's what we can do when Christmas is over. We can proclaim. All right, another thing we can do when Christmas is over, Mary sets the example for us here, is we can ponder. Look what it says in verse 19. Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. That word treasure means to, to remember, to preserve, to keep in mind so it won't be forgotten. Mary is putting together a mental scrapbook of the miracle that she's experiencing. And the word ponder is actually a word that means to, to meet together. It's usually a word that's used when you have a, a group conversation about a topic. This is Mary having an internal dialogue with herself, trying to process, trying to understand, trying to come to terms with what has happened. This is Mary saying to herself, what in the world is going on? And one of the things that I love about Mary is that she is a ponderer. She is a wonderer. Maybe you remember when the angel first came to her in the story that's recorded in Luke chapter 1, the angel comes to Mary and says, greetings, you who are highly favored. And the scripture says that Mary's response is that she wondered what kind of greeting this might be. I think that's how I'd respond if an angel showed up and said, hey, God favors you highly. I'd be looking for, okay, what does this mean? What's coming next? She wonders what kind of greeting this might be. And then when the angel tells her she's going to have a child, and this child is the spectacular son of God, the mighty one, the one who's come to save the world, she asks a question, how can this be? How can this be? Mary says, you know what? I, I missed a couple of days of biology class. But unless my mom and dad were lying to me about the whole birds and the bees thing, there's an important prerequisite that has not happened here yet, and I don't think this is possible. And even if it were possible, why would it be me? Why a, a middle schooler from Podunkville in a third world country, why not somebody who's an, a, you know, a trained parent with a fleet of nannies at their beck and call in a nice, safe, large SUV with lots of safety features, why would I be the one chosen? And can you imagine the stress, the pressure of being a parent to the Son of God? What do you do if he demonstrates his divine creativity by drawing and painting all over the couch? How do you respond to that? What do you do if you're praying at mealtime and instead of saying amen at the end of the prayer, he says, I've got this. What do you do if he's 12 years old and you take him to the temple and all of a sudden you can't find him and he's just hanging out in the temple for two days and you think you've lost the son of God? How can this be? Why would this be? Mary's got all these questions. She's pondering. And then here after the birth of Jesus, when these shepherds come and say that angels spoke to them and she watches those shepherds go out and become missionaries telling the world about Jesus, she's pondering this. What's going on? And it says she treasures and ponders all these things. And she's got so much to ponder. The angel visit to her, the miraculous conception, the, the less than ideal delivery room conditions, the, the visit from those shepherds and then her baby becoming famous throughout Bethlehem while he's just a few hours old. 
And I think it's cool that Mary, I mean, she just models obedience. The scripture says that when, when the angel told her what was going to happen, she said, let it be to me just as you have said. God, I'm on board. I'll do whatever you want. But it's not like a turn your brain off and just obey without thinking about it for Mary. She's got questions. She's pondering. She's wondering. She's wrestling with this. She's trying to understand it. Anselm was a, an important Christian thinker and philosopher. He was the Archbishop of Canterbury around 1100 AD. And his definition of theology is faith seeking understanding. Faith seeking understanding. We trust God. We want to go God's way, but we want to understand it as best we can. We want our brain to catch up with what our heart is committed to. We want to understand what God is doing. And our job after Christmas is to ponder what Christ has done. Don't just swallow it like some sentimental old story. Don't just ignore it and go about your life, but ponder it. Think about it. What does this mean? If God loves you so much that he came to your planet, wrestle with that. Ponder his teaching, what he said. Ponder his death and his resurrection. Put some thought to it. We can never fully wrap our mind around God or around his gospel. It's like trying to fit the ocean in a coffee cup. You're just not going to fit it all in our brains. But we should ponder it. We should think about it. We should seek to understand as best we can. And it'll be like a, a multifaceted jewel that we can just look at each facet at a time and we can never see the whole thing in all of its splendor, but we can do our best to take it in. Your job after Christmas is to ponder. Proclaim like the shepherd did. Ponder like Mary did. And then one final example, one final thing to do that the, the, the scripture shows us from the shepherds is to praise. Look at verse 20. It says, the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. The shepherds go back to their fields. They go back to their work. By the way, a fascinating question I have that the scripture doesn't give us this detail, but did the shepherds just abandon their sheep to go see the baby? Or did they, more than likely, bring the sheep with them, traipsing through Bethlehem to see Jesus? Well, whatever the case is, they go back to the fields, they go back to the real world, they go back to their jobs, but they go back with a different mindset, a different attitude. They go back praising, worshiping God for what he's done. And our job as we return to normal life, as we return to the real world after Christmas, is to return to that world praising, to return to that world amazed at what God has done for us in Jesus Christ and realizing how he has changed the world for us. We are called to live with awe and wonder, to realize that we have a God who loves us that much. And praise can be part of your work life. It can be part of your interaction with family. It can be part of your standing in line at the grocery store. You're not always necessarily singing or bowing your head or doing the things that you do in praise in this building, but you can continually live a life of awe of who God is and what he has done. We can praise God. We can glorify God as we go. So that's your assignment. Now that this Christmas is over, your job is to proclaim, be like the shepherds and tell everybody who will listen about what God has done. Your job is to ponder, to turn these things over in your heart, seek to understand them as best you can. And your job is to praise, to celebrate the goodness of God and give thanks to him for the gift of Jesus Christ. Would you bow with me in prayer? God, what a gift you've given to us at Christmas. And thank you that the moment that that day ends is not the end of the story at all. But we can live in light of what you've done for us in Christ. Help us to follow the example of the shepherds and Mary and help us to live differently because of what you have done for us in Christ. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. We're going to sing one more song together. And as we do, we want to extend an invitation to you. If you're ready to receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord, if you're ready to join this church family, if you're ready to make a commitment to serving God in some way, whatever decision he's calling you to make, would you come forward and meet me here at the front? I'd love to pray with you. If you're worshiping online, you can let us know of your decision too through the Contact Us form on our webpage. Let's stand.
And let's say yes to Jesus together as we worship him. you be seated just for a moment. I'll share just one important announcement with you. Remember that next Sunday we will have just one worship service again at 10 a.m., same schedule as today. And then on the 9th, we will get back to our regular full Sunday morning schedule. Enjoy what's left of the holidays and enjoy the celebration. We'll go with a blessing from Romans 15, verse 13. Hear these words. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.